Report. These are the actual audio reports of Special Agent Jake Taylor of the U.S. Unexplained Phenomena Administration. Covertly obtained recordings the government has kept secret of the strange things that happen where you live. Everyone would like some art hanging in their home, and here's your chance to have originals of prints by Weez. Weez is a phenomenal artist known all over for a great work, including the Love Me Dog Art series. Check out artbyweez.com today and get one of our amazing paintings or prints for your home. This is Special Investigator Jake Taylor with the U.S. Unexplained Phenomena Administration. The date is June 21st at 11.30 a.m., 2036. This is my report. Area location, north 38 degrees, 26 minutes, 35 seconds latitude, and west 80 degrees, 14 minutes, 31 seconds longitude in West Virginia. I arrived at the designated area at 10.15 a.m. June 20th, 2036. I've heard some strange tales from the other investigators, but none of that prepared me for what I discovered there. I even wondered if I had dreamt the whole thing. (sighs) According to the report filed by the two guys who found it, they walked a ways into the cave and found an old steel door 12 feet high embedded in the rock. They were unable to open it, but thought they heard some kind of weird animal noises coming from behind the door. It took me 10 minutes to reach the door and I put my ear to it and listened. Nothing, not a sound. The door was made of metal and rusted over. It was a large ring to pull it open with, and no locks on the door. I was a little nervous about what was on the other side, but I grabbed hold of the ring and pulled. It took a lot of strength, but finally gave way and opened enough for me to get through. Dead silence. Staying just away from the opening in case something rushed out at me, I aimed my flashlight into the opening and waited. Nothing. I peered inside, but the beam from the flashlight seemed unable to penetrate the darkness. It shone for a few feet, but there the light just stopped. It was eerie. I stepped through the door opening and strained my ears, listening for any sound, but I heard nothing. It was the kind of dead silence that makes you feel a sort of pressure on your ears. Moving the light around didn't help, and I took a few more steps in, feeling the ground cautiously with my feet. The ground wasn't rocky or dirt. It felt smooth like a polished floor. I'd gone in about ten feet when the door swung shut. I fumbled around until I found the door and pushed on it with all my might, but it wouldn't budge. I was trapped in the chamber with a useless light, no idea how big it was, if I was alone in it, and how I was going to get out. A few seconds went by, or it may have been a few minutes, when a feeling of sensory deprivation began to creep into my consciousness. Then I heard her voice. It was definitely a woman's voice. It said, I don't get many visitors here. The voice had a strange, melodic quality to it, and it echoed, making it impossible to tell where it came from. She spoke again. How are you called? Taylor. Jake Taylor. Who are you? Where are you? I stand in front of you. Can you not see me? I can't see anything. I understand. Your eyes do not function well in this level of light. I will adjust it for you. Slowly it started to get brighter until I could see everything clearly. The chamber was big, about two stories high and fifty feet wide and long. I didn't see her anywhere, and as I looked around the room, the walls, floors, and ceiling were a highly polished white stone, like marble without the veins and seamless, like I was standing inside a hollowed-out solid cube of the stuff. The stone itself glowed, lighting the room, which was completely empty. I looked around, and even the door I came through was gone. I called out to her, Where are you? I have hidden myself from your eyes. I do not trust you to see me. Hidden yourself? I don't understand. Your mind is not developed enough to understand. I have the ability to make you see what I wish you to see. When I scanned your mind before you opened the door, I did not like what I read. You were sent here to determine what lay behind that door. 
to inspect it and determine if we were a threat to your people. If so, you would try to destroy me. Your vision is blocked for my own protection. I tried to sound a lot more confident than I was. Tell me about yourself. In due time, perhaps. For now you will be my... guest. And I will learn more about you. I was scared, but I was also getting a little angry. Listen, lady, I'm getting tired of this. Show yourself so we can talk. We are able to communicate without your seeing me. Your mind shows you have been violent in the past. Silence while I continue to probe your mind. I opened my mouth to speak, but nothing came out. I started to move, but realized it wasn't only my vocal cords that were frozen. I couldn't speak or move. Whoever she was, she had abilities that I considered a threat. Too late, I realized she knew what I was thinking. As I said, your instincts are towards violence. I will continue to scan your mind. It was quiet again, and there wasn't a thing I could do about it but wait for her to finish reading my thoughts and my past. Then she spoke again. I also see mercy and kindness in you. Your instincts towards violence are more for self-preservation. I assure you, I mean you no harm. Of course, my saying so alone will not convince you. We seem to be at an impasse. You are free to speak. Hmm. <clears throat> I tested my vocal cords. They were working again, but I still couldn't move. Okay, you've read my mind. Then you know the only way that we can develop a trust is if I can see you and learn more about you so I can understand who I'm dealing with. Tell me who you are, where you come from, what are your intentions? She hesitated a moment before she spoke. I am standing in front of you. Slowly she began to appear. She hadn't turned invisible. She had the ability to make my eyes and my mind just not see her. Everything then that was happening was happening in my mind. Was the whole room an illusion? What she showed herself to be might also be an illusion. It was the first time in my life I found I couldn't trust my own senses. Even the thoughts in my head might be put there by her. I had to take it one step at a time. She was standing about ten feet away, tall, about seven foot. Her skin was the palest I'd ever seen, and she had eyes that were fairly large, but not bad-looking sort of a reddish color. Her hair was very long down past her waist and very black. Her figure was more or less straight down without much in the way of curves. An alien from another planet? It sounds stupid, but I immediately counted her fingers and toes. She wasn't wearing anything on her feet. There were ten, five on each hand and foot. The dress looked like it was made of some kind of very large green leaves wrapped around her covering her from her shoulders to just above her knees. She had knees, and they bent in the right direction. My next thought was that I'd watched too many old movies about Martians invading the Earth. She laughed. I am from Earth, though I live deep down inside it. I am also human, though a different branch of our species. My name is Shaleen. How old am I? She was still reading my mind. I am 34. Okay, now how about getting out of my head? That's kind of rude, if you know what I mean. I will continue to scan your thoughts for signs of violence. And to answer your next thought, no, I am not the only one of my kind. Centuries ago, during human development, a branch of our species established itself underground. We maintained surveillance of those living above ground, yet hid ourselves from you. We thought it best not to mingle with you. We watched you closely, and our language developed the same way yours did. That is how I am able to speak with you. How is it you're able to read minds? Because there was so much darkness, our evolutionary process developed better eyes to see in the darkness and gave us time over the centuries to learn to use portions of our brain that you on the surface ignored. Did you put that door up? Yes. It can only be opened by us. I am the guardian of this gate. 
I deter others by making them think they hear sounds that would frighten them coming from within. When you approached, I sensed you and found that if I had denied you access, you would use sufficient force to open the door and you would be accompanied by others. Too many for me to block all their minds from seeing what is really here. For that reason, I let you in, then hid the door from you. You plan on keeping me prisoner? Perhaps. We have not yet determined what we will do with you. We? There was movement off to the side that caught my eye, and I looked towards it, still unable to move. A group of women were walking right through the wall, coming towards us. The one in front spoke as they got near me. What has he revealed to you? He is confused. Like most men, his initial reaction is to lash out, though there is sufficient intelligence and curiosity to restrain himself while he determines if we are a threat to him. The women were as different from each other as any group of women I've known. They were all tall, ranging from six foot to over seven foot. Their skins shared that incredible pale complexion and the same jet black hair, but their features were unique other than all having those large red eyes. Another one spoke out. We should kill him and put his body a far distance from the entrance tonight. Others mumbled agreement, and the one who I met first was just looking at me. Another from the group spoke. If we let him free, he will bring back more of the surface people and kill us. I agree with Villani. We should kill him and dispose of him so he can't be connected to us. No, it was Shaleen. He came on orders from others who know of our entrance. If he disappears, they will send more, and they will be heavily armed. We need to give this more thought. In the meantime, we will keep him here in this room. He can't escape. There was some more muttering, but in the end they agreed and all of them walked back through the wall. I was able to move again and tried following them through the section of wall they walked through, but it was solid stone. It took me about an hour to tap all the walls and realize there was no way out of this marble room. By then I had lost track of exactly where they came and went from, so I sat in the middle of the room and waited, wondering how long it would take for them to make up their minds and what they do to me when they did. I checked my watch. It was 10.55 a.m. I was starting to get hungry and thirsty. Noon came and went, and I sat there helpless. They could read my mind, and I was determined not to have any thoughts that would cause them to think I couldn't be trusted. I knew, once they thought I was a permanent threat, I was a dead man. One o'clock came, then two, three, four, and finally at five, I heard someone behind me. I turned quickly and saw a man approaching me. He was shorter than me, and he had an odd look on his face. There was a tray in his hands with what looked like food and drink on it. He didn't say anything, just set the tray down. I stayed sitting so he wouldn't think I was going to be hostile, but was alert for any threatening gesture on his part in case I needed to defend myself. When he set the tray down... I looked into his eyes and was shocked at what I'd seen. They were blank. The look on his face was like some sort of zombie. As dumb as that sounds, that's what came to mind. Nothing there. No sign of any emotion at all. He didn't speak either. He just set the tray down, stood back up, and was about to leave when I spoke to him. Hey, who are you? What's going on here? Where are the others? No reaction. It was as if he hadn't heard a thing I said. He just walked off through the wall. This time I jumped up and ran towards the place where he went through, but hit a hard surface and was knocked back off my feet. I was ready to start screaming, and it took every ounce of self-control I could muster to keep it together. I had to keep my cool if I was ever going to get out of there. The food looked like something that was grown. I recognized mushrooms, but the rest was foreign to me. The drink turned out to just be water. Having not eaten since breakfast, I was starved and ate everything on the tray. (sighs) What were they planning to do with me? Would it be a death sentence, or would I remain a prisoner here forever in this white blob of a room? Those thoughts ran through my mind as I ate. 
A few minutes after I finished, I felt drowsy. The food was drugged. I tried to stand, but fell over and blackness swept over me, sending me into a deep sleep. I couldn't pull myself out of it. They were nightmares. I was in a cage that sat in a long line of cages filled with other men, and they all had that same blank look as the one who brought my supper. I kicked and shook the door to the cage, but it wouldn't budge, and my yelling brought no one. Was this my fate, to live in a cage like an animal until I died? I yelled at the top of my lungs and finally woke myself up, still yelling. I was still in the marble room, and as my eyes focused, Shaleen was standing over me. It has been decided it would be dangerous for us to let you leave. I told her, if you think I'm going to let you turn me into a zombie like that guy who brought me the drug food, you're nuts. You have to kill me first. We prefer not to do such things, but we will do what's necessary to protect ourselves. If we let you go, others will come, and no good can come of that. Our way of life is not yours. I said, There must be some way we could work together. It doesn't have to be like this. She shook her head. We have always monitored your world. We are not compatible. On my world, we have a chance to defend ourselves before being judged. Why wasn't I given a chance to speak for myself? Your thoughts spoke for you. We know what is in your mind, and we know the minds of those others on the surface. You will be taken to the cages, and your mind altered. A thought went through my mind, and as it did, I looked at her. For the briefest instant, I saw fear and knew I was right. Without another word, I got up and walked to a wall and started feeling along it. It wasn't the smooth texture of the marble. I felt rough stone and dirt. It was all an illusion. And when I looked for the door before, I felt what my eyes told my mind was there. Stop, she yelled, and I could hear others coming. Everything started going black, and I fought to keep my mind free from her probing and illusions she was trying to put there. The other women came rushing back into the room just as my hands felt what my mind said wasn't there. The door. I shoved against it with all my might and it moved, but only a little. The women were almost on me and I pushed harder and slammed myself against it again and again until I felt it move enough to get through. I slid through the opening and ran as fast as I could. They were right behind me and those long legs gave them speed, but they weren't used to running, and I made it out of the tunnel and into the daylight and kept running towards my car. They came out after me, but the sunlight hurt their eyes too much to continue. They weren't used to bright light. I remembered Shaleen's comments about not being able to see in the darkness. I got in the car and, dumb as it may sound, I locked the doors and looked back at the tunnel entrance. What to do next? Sitting there, composing my thoughts with the door locked and the motor running while staring at the tunnel entrance wasn't getting me anywhere. The decision on what to do next was with someone a lot higher up the food chain than I was. A few minutes ticked by and a thunderous explosion sounded from deep inside the tunnel and the whole side of the hill came tumbling down, covering the entrance for good. It would take a long time to dig it out and even if someone tried it, it wasn't likely they'd find anything. The steel door had been real enough, but everything else was an illusion. There was no way to know what to look for, and the women and their zombie men could be anywhere beneath the earth, in a world they were familiar with, and we knew nothing about. An attempt to rescue those poor men down there would be useless. There wasn't enough left of their minds to help. Generations of breeding and mind control had finished them off for good. The women would never blend into our society, and you can't just murder them. They've done nothing to us. My suggestion is to let them be. They lived all these centuries without causing us a problem, and they aren't about to start trouble now. They just want to be left alone, and I think we should give them that. That's my report. I'm going to get a burger and fries if food was terrible.
Everyone would like some art hanging in their home, and here is your chance to have originals of prints by Weez. Weez is a phenomenal artist known all over for a great work, including the Love Me Dog Art series. Check out artbyweez.com today and get one of our amazing paintings or prints for your home. This recording and its contents is copyrighted and may not be used in part or in whole by anyone for any reason other than to listen to where authorized.